that when Jacob was wrestling with the angel, you know, when Jacob was wrestling with the angel, Paul's spooking it out. Just, not, just look at it. He's wrestling with the angel, and all of a sudden he starts to ask about, like, what's my name? Well, you, you know, like, you know, like, bless me. You know, he's about bless me, and then we get into this name thing. The angel asks, what's your name, so forth, and the long will you be called, so forth, and so on. But he's wrestling with it, and though we presented a couple of other, this is May 5th, uh, the Shabbat day, and we still have another part to the Ahare Mot, or Kamotu Bechala, you know, after the death, his death, or really they, after they died, speaking of Nadab and Abihu and the whole strange fire incident, this particular Shabbatical or, or Sabbatical study, and, and, and this Sabbath, the May 5th Sabbath, let's call it, it, it it's interesting because it means after the, after the death, or after they died, or after the death, you understand, his death, the death, and speaking of the two sons, of, of Haram, who went into the holy unauthorized, you know, and burned strange fire. You know, we've been talking about the, the cannabush or the cannabis, so forth and so on, and we understand there's a whole bunch of so-called legalities that surround that. We are ministering to even many brothers and, and sisters, not so many sisters, but still ministering to the even the brethren's sisterin who contact us for certain documentation and paperwork so that they can maintain their, quote, Rastafari liberty, you know, whether they're locks or whether the, the, the livet, the liberty, you know, what some might call their diet, so for the dietary regulations, while incarcerated on a variety of charges, and the majority of these charges are quite frivolous, in the true light of the law. But because our people do not know law, this is why we talked about the Moorish, the, the connection with the Moorish science uh, in a couple of vids a little bit earlier. And, um, you know, we didn't, you could talk, forgive I and I, because of the labor, there's, you know, there's, there's the harvest is ready, but the laborers are few. And that question there, that, that thought, why are the laborers few? Because on, on one level, those who want to be co-laborers still have to take on the responsibility, you understand, for their salvation according to what they know and they accept as true. So this is getting out of the so-called passivity and recognizing the activity. Can we say Rastafari? Rastafari is a movement. Okay, that's true. Rastafari is a movement. The, the whole question about religion, we say spirituality. But legally speaking, see, overstanding the law, legally speaking, we would say we are a spirituality, but religiously we will have to define certain things, quote, religiously according to the law. So a lot of ones said, we're not a religion, we're not a religion, we're a, we're a way of life, and, 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 and marijuana and dreadlocks and certain type of, um, a certain type of um, livid, a certain type of foods we eat, certain type of foods we don't eat, these are the reasons, and we refer as a reference to the Bible. But then when ones get incarcerated, right, right when ones get incarcerated, we can't write to the, 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 the officials and go through all this, we're not a religion, we're spirituality. Because, see, when you say that, right, and, 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 and you disavow, say, the word religion. Now, folks will say, yo, bro, I know what you're saying, but we're not a religion and such and such and such, and you want to show me the word. I, we already know that. You know what I'm saying? And this is not to be, to be proud or whatever. We already know that. But what we're trying to show you is that you have to understand the law and you have to understand that you have a responsibility, each of y'all, I'm speaking to the brothers and sisters and even the curious who might watch these videos, you understand, but speaking to the lost sheep, you understand, the lost black people, you understand, the, the once lost and hopefully they will find themselves, they will recover themselves, but even when you recover yourself, you recover that knowledge, you say, yes, I admit, I recognize it in my heart and my soul. That means there's action that must 
commence. You know, there is certain action. And, uh, and, and, and the first level of action, really, in, in this semi-state of, 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 of peace, you understand the semi-state, see, so when we say action, a lot of folks think, you know, that means pick up the machine, pick up the iron or something. Like, no, 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 no. First, we've got to be, become disciplined about our rights, legally speaking. You understand? Because we can't do that. Forget the other level. You understand? Forget the other level because we're not even understanding the jurisdiction we're in. You understand the jurisdiction? And this is not just saying, well, because we're in America. So, no, this is by divine law. By divine law. You understand? And if you look at the Beta Israel problem, and I'm, I'm going to just update this for you all. You look at the nigger problem, black folks problem, is that they don't know law. You understand? They, uh, overall, there's a few that do know, know it, but because they have a moral problem, they keep this knowledge to themselves. So it really doesn't benefit. It, 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 it doesn't benefit all. They use it for themselves and their family, so forth and so on. And, you know, it's not like the Judas. They got that Iscariot syndrome. You understand? Know but moving past that, we want to continue on this divine heritage, Ethiopia, Amos 9 and 7, the Holy Covenant, the days, so forth and so on. Now, this still speaks to the spiritual aspects, but there are some temporal aspects that once we become conscious, right, once we become conscious of, the, of our divine heritage, you know what I mean? And it's a continual process learning. I mean, learning and growing. There, there are some some foundational um, matters when we talk about land, you know, where are we from, who are we, you know, where are we from, uh, how do we get here? Can you simply answer that? Why do you simply answer that? Can you give a, can you write a brief statement to, to who you are, where, it's like an affidavit. Can you make an affidavit for who you are, where you're from, and how did you get here? You know, it doesn't mean that you cannot point to the spiritual level, but give some, give some documentation, point to some, some established facts or provable facts to, to, make that, to make that affidavit, to make that, to, make that, to make that known. So as we've been thinking about this, we've been saying, you know, there's a lot of ones that really want to do this and want to do that, so forth and so on. But the first thing they really need to do is they need to correct their status. You understand? They need to um, also correct their name. You see what I'm saying? They need to correct their name. And, and the status and name kind of goes together. So what we're going to do in the next part of this, because this really has been on my mind since we um, had seen Brother Taj Tariq's vid. And, of course, this is part of, you know, our teaching. This is part of the whole movement. But this aspect of the law, and each of our responsibilities, like the Bible says this, the Bible says, um, says, says that uh, we have to work out our salvation. You understand? Yes, um, by the grace of God. You, you, you know, we're saved by the grace of God, of course. You know, it's by grace that we get to even find out these sort of things. You understand, like some folks, some brothers and sisters and others have, have written, I just came across your, your site by chance. You know, by chance, you know, they were just surfing or put some stuff in, saw a title of the video, they clicked on it, and they say, hey, I, I, I check for what you're saying, yes, you know, so forth and so on. So that's like grace. You know, that's like grace. You understand, they, they didn't earn it. You know what I mean? It wasn't their right to, to, to hear this truth or know this truth. You know what I'm saying? But it was by grace. But even with that grace, we can fall from that grace, just like Satan did, the devil did, being a novice, if we don't build up and get mastery of this thing known as the law. You know what I'm saying? Known as the law. So there's many other brothers out there, the Moorish, you know, we talked about the Moors and Noble Drew Ali you know, the whole sovereignty issues and so forth and so on. And I would advise each one to do their homework, you know what I'm saying, J just to find out what's out there because there's many different approaches to this issue and idea of, of, of law and sovereignty. We've mentioned sovereignty before. Some of the videos spoke about, so oh, excuse me, sovereignty, sovereignty. 
sovereignty, sovereignty. I say sovereignty, sovereignty, tomato, tomato, but really correctly, it probably would be sovereignty, all right? Now, before we can even get to that level of exercising so sovereignty, practice makes perfect, exercising sovereignty, we have to, first of all, understand status, what is our status, and how the slave master's name, right, by default, by default, makes us, or really makes you all, because we at least got a little past that part, you know, we, 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 we threw away, you know, slave master's name, I and I personally, in a Rasi Dino Teferi name, you know what I'm saying? Um, we've gone on the record, we've declared this. Not just declare it to other people who agree with us in, in spirit, but also in truth have made this a recognized fact. That if you have a slave master's name, a slave master's name, then by default of law, you are a ward of state. What does that mean? That means that the federal, state, city, county, or local government is your daddy or your mommy. You understand? Is your daddy or mommy. They can override you. They can override your family. And this is one of the reasons why we'd be hearing about all these kind of things where, you know, they're talking about um, these uh, child protection agencies taking people's children who have done nothing, but just because they can do it, they do it. And a lot of cases where maybe children should be taken into some sort of protective custody, they don't know it. I mean, they don't do nothing about it. And then we hear these cases, oh, how come child protective services did it? Heads are going to roll, blah, 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 blah. But, but let's understand the importance when we talk about name. You know what I'm saying? And we've done a lot of videos from different perspectives on our name. What does name mean? Why is name so very important? And why is that slave master's last name that the majority of so-called African Americans or blacks in America have basically keeps them in wardship, in wardship? You know what wardship means? Okay, let me explain something to you. Most folks, if they get a ticket or a summons to appear in court, right, most black folks, when they go straight to court, you're going straight to a judge, and you go, and no jury is there. You see what I'm saying? There's no jury there. You're going straight to adjudication. Now, some of you already know more about this in detail. Some of you all might not. What I'm trying to state to you is that there are steps, legal steps, you understand, before you go to adjudication. But all of those steps, such as status, such as jurisdiction, such as venue, you know what I'm saying? In other words, those, those prior steps must take correspondence. But for slaves or emancipated slaves, it doesn't have to. Why? The problem is in that word emancipation. What does emancipation mean? And what does emancipation mean to you? Those are two different questions. One what does emancipation mean, right? That's the first question. What's really the meaning of it? And then, secondly, what does it mean to you? Probably I should have asked it reverse. I should have asked, what does emancipation mean to you? And then ask, what does emancipation mean? Because that might confuse some. Most people are going to probably answer what emancipation means to them. But they're going to think that it means what emancipation means. Emancipation basically means to make over as property. Now, let me say that one more time because some of you might not have gotten it. Emancipation means to make over as properties. But what have we been told that it means? Well, we've been told that that's, what, that's Abraham Lincoln freed the slaves. He's, he's, he's like Father Abraham. No, 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 he's a lie. He is a bleeping, bleeping lie. You understand? But... All the same, whether he's a liar, whether he's not, many Negroes believed in him then, and many more Negroes believe in him now, and they think that emancipation means that they are free. 
they think that it has brought them to the state of of a real natural person. You know, saying like the white folks who know the game and other nations and other nationalities who know the game. You know what I'm saying? No, it, it doesn't mean that. Emancipation means that we were freed. Understand this. The sentence is not over. We were freed from the slave master. But the one who freed us or took us from the slave master was the federal government, the federal United States government. You understand? And they basically took ownership. You understand? So they freed us in a limited, a, see, this, see, a lot of folks don't understand this. I'll be watching Judge Joe Brown sometimes, and this is not to give Joe Brown a, a blind, but, you know, <laughs> one that could say he has good jurisprudence. That means he understands the science of the law, and, and he tries to wink, wink, and throw out a couple words here and there. And he, he, he said it before other judges, and you probably heard this in movies and on TV and everything, that ignorance of the law is no excuse. What? Ignorance of the law is no excuse. What does that mean? It means that if you don't know, right, what the law is in a given local region, um, state, county, city, um country and you violate that the judge does not have to give you any mercy that's within the judge's discretion the judge can say okay yeah you didn't know this but now you know this all right i'll let you go on a probation or i'll you know good behavior blah 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 community so you know the judge can do whatever within the discretionary of the law he can do whatever he he will but see you don't even know what the law is first of all so that means that you're almost like a, like a deer in the headlights. The car is coming. You stop. The car, the driver can say, ah, I don't want to hit this deer. I stop. The driver can say, listen, if I, if, I, if I stop, I might skid. I might slide. I got my family. I'm going to just so sorry for the deer and going to press on gas and bang. You see what I'm saying? So knowledge of the law is very important. But people say, oh, that's legal mumble. We just got to make money. Money is governed by what? Some people probably said markets. No, no, no. Money is governed by law. You understand? Then within law, you got regulations, and now we live in a period of deregulation. You hear all this stuff about the economic, the global economy, the American economy, blah, 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 blah. All of this is because of law. And why things are changing so rapidly is that more and more people are beginning to learn the game. And more and more people who are learning the game are acting on that knowledge of learning the game. So they are, in a sense, gaining the system and not being gained on by the system or rather gang-banged by the system. You, you, you know what I mean? It's like ask anybody who's been through the so-called judicial system, especially if they have been through the judicial system in ignoramus you know, in ignorance. You know what I mean? They've gotten smacked, knocked down, kicked, everything, probably lost so much stuff because they had no, no knowledge, you understand, of the law. And if they knew the law and did not apply it, that's even worse. Somebody that doesn't know the law and the victim ignorantly, you can feel sorry for the person. But then if the person knows the law and has time to act on that knowledge, you know what I mean? It's like you knew this. It's like when somebody goes to court, you see the people show up in court, and something happened. They said, this person stole all my money, and it was like five, ten years, and then five, ten years later, or they break up or something, and the judge says, you, you can't do that. You, you waited too long. You know what I mean? You waited too long to act on your rights. And I took down some, uh, a little note right here. Let's see if I can find this. I took up this little note right here that was very, very interesting. Um, I think I was watching, I don't know if it was People's Court, so forth and so on. Um, yeah, it says something about acting on your legal rights promptly. You have to act on your legal rights promptly. 
You know what I'm saying? You have to act on... And then I thought about this. Oh, wait, maybe that's why they be saying to black folks about reparation. They're like, how long ago was that? A kind of a point there, if, if that whole thing, 1860-something, so forth and so on, when recon, 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 instruction was supposed to happen, that was a whole hoodwink and bamboozle. You know what I'm saying? And that kind of demonstrates how that generation of black folks really did not understand the law. Some of them knew a little bit of law, and they thought that, hey, once we get, like, emancipation, we're free, because somebody told them that emancipation means that you're free instead of the true meaning of that word, that you've been made over as property. Literally, literally, emancipare means to free from hand. In other words, it's like this. I got this smith of caduce. I emancipate it. You understand? I free it from my hand, and I give it to a brother, or I give it to a sister. And now they now seize it with their hand. And when they seize it with their hand, it becomes now their property. The book is not free to do whatever it wants. Now, we can understand that in a book sense, because a book is, you know, not living in that sense, like, like a living human being, a living, conscious, so-called sentient human being. Now, imagine now a whole group of lost sheeple, a whole group of lost people, you understand, who were freed, from the hand of individual plantation owners and slave masters, and they now were, you can say, um, taken over as property, as the possession of the federal government. That's basically what happened when we look back on the so-called um, Civil War. People say, Civil War freed the blacks. No, 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 no. Civil War freed the blacks from the hand of the slave master, and then we became the property of the federal government. People say, well, well, well I hear what you're saying, but how do you know that? And, and more importantly, how can I know that? Look at your, your birth certificate. Now, people say, well, white folks got birth certificates too. Yeah, because they, they got fooled. White folks got fooled. Because white folks saw that black people had this kind of relationship with the government, and many of them who didn't know the game either, they went and they got birth certificates as well. You notice that some people in society don't have birth certificates and you've never seen their birth certificates and you probably can never find their birth certificates. Those people know the game. You understand? They don't have birth certificates. You know, the, the most interesting thing is the Obama thing. When they're saying that, uh, what's Obama's birth certificate prove he was born here? No. What they are saying with the Obama birth certificate, and get this, I've heard a lot of folks talk about this, and he's not this, he's not that, blah, 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 you know, the pro and the con, so forth and so on. <laughs> he is not property of the federal government. And that's what the big argument is, is that he is not property of the federal government. Like these other Negroes. You could put that in parentheses. Like these other Negroes. So when you know, white man should come, come and divide and conquer you and say, oh, Obama is, is not even really an American. Obama is not black like you black folks are. And you look and say, well, my complexion, I know somebody who has a, his complexion. I know another person who looks like him. Who, you know, so we try to go through this in our mind and figure out what they mean he's not black like, is it because his white mama? Oh, it must be the white mama thing. Well, it, it has something to do with that. You understand? Because remember, his class of folks, you understand, are ones who know the law, at least to a better extent than the average Negroes or black folks or African American. So it's that birth certificate, or as, um, remember Bob Marley, he did the song, I think it's the song right now, some of you are probably shouting out the name of the song where he says, um, where he says, I'll have no birth certificate. Sur sur a certificate or something like that, where he said, don't, like when the cop stops him and he said, don't have no birth certificate, you know what I'm saying? That is the key. You see, a lot of us, we heard it and we like, yeah, Bob, you know, that's, that's a good song. And so, but we really didn't peep what that meant in, in its fullness, just like the thing with Obama and his birth certificate. You see what I'm saying? Obama and his birth certificate, you know, because Obama doesn't have a birth certificate, does not make him an, an eligible 
to be the United States president. They tell you that because you don't know the law. I, I mean, where does, it, where does having a birth certificate prove that you're an American? You see, that is, that is a new law that is post-Civil uh, War. You understand? Know and that was mainly put there to keep control of this newly freed from one direct slave master and now, in a sense, free in society in a limited sense, but still under the federal government. This is why whenever you hear about black issues, blacks are always talking about the federal government, federal laws. They speak about civil rights. Get that? Instead of civil liberties. How come you never hear black folks talk about, they violated my civil liberties? But you, you, if you listen, you hear white folks and others talk about this civil liberty thing. Sometimes white folks and others who don't know the game, they might talk about civil rights or they might use the civil rights in a limited context. They're not declaring their whole, their whole freedom or identity under civil rights, but they'll use that. You know, like, you're, you know, like if you're in a fight, you'll pick up this or pick up that, and you use it. You understand? It might not be a chosen weapon, but it will help you in that case until you can get free or get whatever you need to get. So white folks, and it's not really a white or black thing on that level, though there is that component to it. You see, once you get past the checkerboard, you know, and once you get past the black and the white checkerboard, you know, then you begin to see the checkerboard is, is what, what keeps you to one move ahead, one move to the side, uh, one move two boxes up and one box over, one jump over this box. You know, it keeps you in that, it keeps you in that, um, it keeps you in that check. It keeps you in check. You understand? It's basically meant to keep out the, 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 the wannabes, basically. That's why a lot of the folks who are in masonry really don't really understand the fullness even of the whole Masonic idea. You understand? For them, it's just a club, hangout place, you know, get a better job sort of thing. You know, those, those old folks, they're like cannon fodder in the old way of saying they'd be, they'd be like the cannon fodder. But once you get past the black and the white level of it, you see that there is law. There's law. You understand? There is, there is God's law, first and foremost. There's the law of nature. If you read the Constitution for yourself, have you ever read the United States Constitution? No, for real. Have you ever sat down and people, I don't want to read that. That's that white man thing. And yet you living up in the white man's land with the white man's ID, with the white man's name, with the white man's everything, and you would not even read. First of all, I just said read first. Secondly, study it. But first, how are you going to study if you didn't read it, if you don't get a familiarity with it? You know, you need to read the Constitution. You, you really need to read it. And, th and there's some other sources out there, but, you know, ones have to, you know, get active for themselves. Like if you, if somebody had you all tied up and, and they're about to do something horrible to you and there's a way that you can get free from that, I don't think you just stay all tied up and think about it. I think you will be about trying to get free from that. But see, that's the whole thing with this. People don't see the direct danger. They don't really notice the the danger that is, that is ahead. It's something about the about about the human being at that at that um unconscious level that that doesn't see it and you can look at the rat and the rat trap and the mice and you can learn something from that kind of example maybe that's why they call it a rat race on that sort of level so i'm touching on some of these issues as a kind of an overview as a kind of an overview there's some specific points that i would like to focus more attention on both within the context of these vlogs and videos and in other um, um, presentations as well as in, in certain written form because what we're trying to do, not trying, what we're doing now is getting um, the, 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 the documentation together, you understand, documentation that ones and ones that can help inform ones and ones of what we are saying, and they can check it out for themselves, as well as 
can give one's um, possible um, um, resorts or retorts or responses, you know what I'm saying, to this present situation that the majority of our people are in, you know what I'm saying, and most kind of forget about this. I've heard some folks say that they'll change their name when they get, like, to Africa or something like that. Listen, I'm not saying you can't get on a plane and go to Africa, but if you have that mentality, then you're probably not going to get to Africa. And even if you think that, yeah, that's what I really want to do, you're not making the, the necessary steps to free yourselves, you understand, free yourselves from, from the incorrect uh, status. And, and, and the name is very much connected with this incorrect status. Status. So this is what we're going to go, go into the name change. We've spoken about name change before. You understand? And name change is, is, is a part of it. Name change definitely is a part of it. But you have to look at name change in connection with the correction of status. So what we're speaking about is this. Name, nationality, and birthright. You understand? Name, nationality, and birthright. All right? Um. I was going to talk about uh, Esau for a moment. I mentioned this before, that when we study the scripture and we read about how Esau sold his uh, birthright for something to eat, you know, I've, a lot of black preachers, they preach on this. And a lot of black folks, I'm, I'm, no doubt you've heard this preached on before in some context about how Esau, you understand, sold his birthright um, to his brother Yaakov or Jacob for something to eat. And we look at him and shake our heads like, how could he do that? You know, how can you do that? But basically, that is what a lot of us unconsciously have done. And if we hear such a message and continue in the way that we are continuing or pointed, the direction in which we're pointed, we're basically doing even worse than Esau did. But in principle, in principle, it's one and the same thing. It is one and the same thing. So when we're studying Torah, as Rastafarian states for Ethiopian Hebrews, and we come across that point about birthright, and we go back to the very root of it, or at least the first parable and the first metaphor or story in Torah that we find it clearly um, illuminated upon, namely um, Esau selling his birthright. Study it and meditate on it for a moment. Why did Esau sell his birthright? First of all, it's obvious that he didn't feel that the birthright really meant that much to him. He could not have had any, any idea. He just thought it was almost like a word to him. Birthright? Well, I need birthright. I need something to eat. You know, all we think about something to eat. You know, we have a saying, and y'all have a saying too, niggas going to eat. Niggas going to eat. You know what I mean? Niggas think about eating. You know, we're thinking about eating, food, eating, you know, and making money so that we'll, we'll have maybe a little place to live, a little something to drive, and definitely something to eat. So, so what is your birthright? What is your nationhood? You know what I'm saying? Are you truly of the covenant people? You know what I'm saying? Or are you actually like Esau? You know what I'm saying? Are you like Esau? Have you... Sold your birthright, or better yet, most of us not haven't been conscious of this, so we haven't consciously sold our birthright like Esau. But in principle, you understand, know we are in that situation. You understand, know where others, maybe unconsciously, as our ancestors were too, of the law, you understand, know had sold their birthright basically for something to eat. We turned away from who? You understand, know from slave master, and and. It's like that Robert Town said um, video where he was like, Master has been very good to me. He beat me on this day. He whipped me on that day. And then he feed me on this day. You know what I mean? Um, so it, Slave Master was the one who, in a sense, fed the slaves, even though they did all the work themselves. You know, the slaves, they're the ones who were out in the field. They're the ones who were picking cotton all in the nighttime and, and doing everything that was necessary for the real growth. It was their songs and singing over the crops that made the crops grow and made America such a bread basket for everybody. That's why they say, God bless America, because the niggas were there. You see what I'm saying? So we, in a sense, did the work of feeding ourselves, but, but Masa 
or the or the false master, he profited from that, and it was him, it was at his discretion, he was the one who had the legal, quote, unquote, rights, you understand, so he said, um, niggas, take that chitlin, eat that chitlin, I don't want the chitlin, you can have the chitlin, make soul food out of it, I really don't care, you understand, and so he, he fed the niggas, because slave master said, you can't take those chitlins, would the slave take the chitlins, no, so when master said, hey, go ahead, take the chitlin, I don't want that, so, who were they grateful to? They were grateful to Slave Master and White Jesus, which is basically the same thing. You know what I mean? Just White Jesus is, it was a trick to deify the white man in the eyes of the lost sheep. You understand? And now it's being used to deify the white man in the eyes of the world. You understand? But be that as it may, so it was still for something to eat. Now, after Slave Master said, all right, y'all won the Civil War, and Lincoln, he done, done emancipated y'all. He's taking y'all, and, and Slave Master said, get out of here. I, I can't do nothing with y'all anymore because we lost the war, right? Who did the slaves or the blacks or the newly freed um, Negroes, um, blacks and coloreds, who did they turn to? They turned to the federal government. And then we have the whole amendment thing and the Constitution, which is a, another very, very interesting, a very interesting um, um, issue and matter. And then even the three-fourths, or the three-fifths, the three-fifths thing. It's interesting because the three-fifths, a lot of us have approached the three-fifths thing as um, being something that is, that is so-called racial. There is a racial dynamic to that three-fifths in the Constitution thing, but when you really start to study the law, you begin to see that something national, it connects with name, again, right? It connects with birthright, and it connects with nationality. You see what I'm saying? Because answer this question for a moment. When black people, right, from Africa, from wherever in Africa, whichever country in Africa, West Africa, East Africa, when they come over here, right, and they become so-called American U.S. citizens. Are they under the same three-fifths? You answer that. Now, most people say, well, they're black. So, yeah, of course they are. No, they're not. No, they're not. They can come under that in ignorance, but they're not under that three-fifths. Why? Because they have a name. Overstand this. They have a, a, a nationality, and also they have a birthright. You see what I'm saying? They have a birthright. So when we talk about other people coming over here from Africa or from other parts of the world, and they're able to, um, you know, become successful or, you know, have business and, and build up a better life in a shorter period of time. And we've been in this country, people would say, for 400 plus years, and even in this state of emancipation, we still have not all the, we don't know the law. That's basically the long and the short of it. We do not know the law. And I was looking up something right here, and it was curious to me because I, I was thinking about this verse in mind, and I found, I think it's in uh, Romans. You know what I'm saying? We might sum up on, 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 on this particular word right here uh, in, in Romans. And I'm saying look at the law, understand the law, and then think about, the Bible and look at the law in the biblical and legal con it's one and the same. Why do you think in courts traditionally, you understand? Although there's a lot of fight, push and pull on that particular issue, but why do you think in courts one swear on the Bible or one have to have to so called make um make so called um oaths, right? Oath on 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 the Bible. Why do you think that is so? You understand? If you say the whole foundation of this particular nation, we can't call it so-called a Christian nation, but it was heavily influenced by Christian ideas and biblical themes. You understand? When they did not know certain things, they basically understood it biblically, and they used the Bible as an inspiration, legally speaking, or as a template, you understand, for what they did not know otherwise. And it's interesting right here in Romans chapter 2. 
Let's go to Romans chapter 2 for a moment. Romans chapter 2, we're going to begin from verse 11. Um, it says, uh, let's see. Um, it says, for there is no respect of persons with God. There's no respect of persons with God. For as many as have sinned without law, for as many as have sinned without law, shall also perish without law. And as many as have sinned in the law, shall be judged by the law. Let's pause there for a, a brief moment. Now, when said there's no respect of person with God, of course, we'll think like, well, white man, black man, uh, yellow man, or red man, or whatever. Before God, he's not prejudiced because, you know, whatever color or however we look. Well, coming from a human perspective, that's true, too. But if you read the context of it, what's next is said, for as many as have sinned without the law. In other words, if you do something that is against the 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 law of creation like if somebody goes to a high mountain and jumps right it's the law of so-called gravity you understand that basically is going to judge them so they're going to perish without law even if nobody had put a sign up there saying don't jump because people now say well they need to put a sign up there don't jump because they're having people jump off of here and figure if we put a sign up there and say it's the law okay what happens the next example as many as have sinned in the law you understand? Shall be judged by the law. You understand? So what it's saying that with God, if you put it in the, if you get out of the anthropomorphization of God, you know, God in the form of Christ or as a man, and get into the principle of God, it's saying that there are some hard and fast rules, there are principles, right, that govern creation, that govern the universe, that govern even our involuntary uh, you know, our involuntary movements in our bodies, you know what I mean? They are laws. Now, the best of the laws, you understand, such as the law of God, reflect directly and exactly, you understand, that relationship. So for men and people, when we study Torah, it is helping us to understand the laws of the creator and creation, the science of being, in other words. But now hear this more. It says, Verse 13, for not the hearers of the law are just before God. In other words, those who hear the law, we can talk about what well, Torah says this or so on and so on, and, you know, this is, this is, this is um, our name, our correction of status, this jurisdiction. We can talk about all those legal matters. You can hear it. But it says, for not the hearers of the law are just before God. So you can hear it, and you can listen to it all day, but just hearing that does not make you sadic. It does not make you righteous. It does not make you just. Right? But the doers of the law shall be, what? Justified. But the doers of the law shall be justified. Now, often people take this book right here, Romans, Romans chapter 2, and elsewhere in, in Hawaii of Paulos' words, and they spiritualize it. They say, this is talking about, this is talking about the law of Israel and God, and, and, and they make it fuzzy. You know, they, they put it in the fuzzy zone. You know what I'm saying? But that's not what it's talking about. Paul is, Paul is reasoning on basic principles. Remember, he's reasoning both to the, to the Jew or the, or the Hebrew. Let's put it in this terms. He's reasoning to the black and the white. You know what I'm saying? He's reasoning to, to, to both sides. You know what I'm saying? From that one truth. You know what I'm saying? From, from, that, from that universal truth. For when the Gentiles, now the Gentiles simply will say, in, in, in these teachings, the Gentiles simply would be, from our black Hebrew perspective, the white folks, the Europeans, the other non-Ethiopian Hebrew covenant people, even some Africans too, but really this is pointing to those of the north, when you understand Rome and Europe, where the, where the gospel, where the movement was going to in this particular time, the Gentiles, for lack of a better word, will say the European in this context. For when the Gentiles, which have not the law, the Gentiles did not have Torah. They did not have, they have their own laws, but, but notice what Paul is saying. Paul is saying they don't have the law. So he's saying they don't have Torah. You know what I'm saying? They don't have the law of Israel, the law of God, but he's saying that even these Europeans, or let's say it as it is, even these white folks, 
you know what I'm saying, which have not the law, when they do by nature the things contained in the law, when they do somehow in their own nature without even understanding or being told what the law of God, but when they recognize that, um, that, that, that robbery is wrong, that rape is wrong, that child molestation, that stealing, that murder and killing, when they recognize these things are wrong, even though Moses didn't speak to them, but when something in that nature tells them, you know what, that's wrong, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and we're not down with that, and we're going to punish that. So when even these Gentiles or Europeans, which have not the law or Torah, when they do by nature the things contained in the law, these not having the law, these who don't have the law, what does it say? Are a law to themselves. They are a law to themselves. Now, why is this important where we're going? Because remember, we're living in a... In a um, a Greco-Roman society, America, the West, the Gentile, a world dominion is based on a Greco-Roman foundation. Greco, the, the democracy ideas, Romanism, the Republican ideas. So we have these two strands. You know, we have the Greek, you understand, and we have the Roman strand, or we have the Democratic and the Republican strand, also in a sense symbolized by those two colors, the, the blue and the the blue and the red as well. But verse fifteen it says, which shoe which show the work of the law written in their hearts. Which show that the the, the, the the work of the law is already in their conscience. You see, so when we get past the black and the white checkerboard, you know, we get past those sort of levels, we can then begin to recognize the real higher truth that was being shown to us even in these epistles and even in the epistle of Romans. So it says these Gentiles, these white folks, these Europeans, you understand, although they have not the Torah, you understand, but when they do these things in their nature, you understand, according to their nature, that, that are in conformity or harmony with, you understand, the law of God, they become, before even the Almighty, a law to themselves because we had to be told, thou shalt not. Now, they wasn't told, thou shalt not. But if they learn by nature or even experience that, you know what, it's bad to do that. So we're not going to do that. You understand? They are a law to themselves. But if we have the law, if God gave us this holy covenant and we threw it down and we, and we cast it down, or our ancestors cast it down, who do you think is the righteous and the just God who the Bible says is no, um, has no respect, there's no respect of person, no, there's no favoritism? Even if we are the, the black sheep and the black people, his ethnic seed, there's no favoritism with us if we are unrighteous. That means if we are not lawful, if we are not truly in laws, you understand? Unfortunately, we and the majority of the lost sheep have come under law. You know, the very same thing in churches on Sundays that we're not under the law. We are. Da, 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 da. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. You know, what I mean, that's just gas, gaseous. Which shew the work of the law written in their hearts, their conscience bearing witness. That means that even these Gentiles, not having a prophet like Moses, you understand? Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, not being sent to the Gentiles or the European, but even when they in their own conscience receive that spiritual truth in them, that is a blessing for them is what it's saying, because their conscience bearing witness and their thoughts, the meanwhile accusing, that means their thoughts either accuse them or else excusing one another. This is deep right here. I mean, this is really, really deep, that these ones have become conscious to the point that, that, that they think on these things. And either they will accuse themselves and others based on their, the, the witness in their conscience, or otherwise they will excuse Therefore, they are a law to themselves. Verse 16 says, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. 
Now, here's something interesting because it says that the Jew at this time was known by the law or Torah, is condemned by the law or Torah. Now, we can look at the white Jews and say, yeah, that's talking about those white Jews over there. We can apply that meaning in a context in this spiritual day and time. Yes, we can. But if we put this into its context in that day and time, it was not talking about no white Jew. You understand? It was not talking about no Ashkenazi Jew or no Sephardic Jew. It was talking about we, the black Jews. You know what I'm saying? This is who it was speaking about. You, and it says, says behold, thou art called a Jew or a Judahite. And rest is in the law, and rest in the Torah, and makest thy boast of God. You understand that we are God's people. We are even Jah's people. Don't even I and I, and there's a lesson here. There's a very important lesson here. Uh, we make our boast of God. And knowest his will. You know, we say we know what his will is. We, we, we study, and we know what his will is. And approvest the things that are more excellent. And we approve those things that are more excellent than the heathen and the sheathen. Being instructed out of the law, that our instructions come out of Torah. You understand? They come out of the law of Jah. Verse 19, and are confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind. And we're confident that if we spread the teaching of his majesty and we will guide the blind ones, right? A light of them that are in darkness. Truly, they're in darkness, and, and, and we got the light, right? This is what we feel, right? This is what we think. An instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Now, here's what, here's what Paul now asks his question. Hawadio Paulos asks his question. Thou, therefore, which teaches another, teachest thou not thyself? In other words, many of us, you know, we want to teach others, right? You know, I could apply that to myself right here. I want to teach it. So I got to ask myself, do I teach myself? You know what I'm saying? Or is it just to teach others? And then we have to ask ourselves, we want to teach others? Like I, I, I said, I hear, you know, we should hear some Rastas talk about, yeah, I'm not going to go to Ethiopia and teach them how to live. Oh, that, 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 yeah, okay. <laughs> But then when you read this here, it's like, uh, um, teachest thou not thyself? Don't you teach yourself? Thou that preaches a man should not steal, dost thou steal? You understand? If we say, well, teething is wrong, are we teething? You understand? Are we stealing? Thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that ab abhorrest idols... Dost thou commit sacrilege, thou that makest thy boast of the law, or Torah, through breaking the law, dishonorest thou God? In other words, when we break the law, are we honoring God? Are we honoring Jah? Are we dishonoring, dishonoring him? For the name of God, the name of Jah, the name of Ha Elohim, Buruku, is blasphemed among the Gentiles through you. As it is written. This is the key right here. Because here in this particular time, some say this was, you know, the dates on this differ. Some might say it was 45 A.D. Some might say it was 60 A.D. Some will say it must have been between 45 and 90 A.D. Or some will say it was earlier than that A.D., so forth and so on. But basically what we know was very close after the time of the ascension of Yeshua HaMoshiach our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, right? And Paul now, he is going to the Romans. He's now in Rome and he's speaking. And it seems as though he is speaking to the, to the Yehudi. He is speaking to the Hebrews. Let me put this into context for you. He was speaking to those who were of the Ethiopian Hebrew wagon. They were of the Ethiopian Hebrew seed. How do we know that the Jews were Ethiopians or that the Romans took the Jews to be of the same race as the Ethiopians because it's written in their histories. Tacitus and others record this. So it's very evident the, the ethnic, you understand, the ethnic identity that is another proof of this divine heritage right here. 
this divine heritage link. So it's interesting when we look at the context and when you start to meditate, you read it and you start to meditate, okay, what's he saying? What is Paul saying? Paul obviously is talking to Jews, which is to say Hebrews or Judahites, which according to that time would be Ethiopian Hebrews or black Jews because the Jews of that time were recorded in Roman and Roman by Roman historians to be of the race or the seed of the Ethiopians. That means that they wasn't like these Jews that we see today, these converted Khazars and, and even the Ashkenazis, the Ashkenazi the Ashkenazis and the and the Sephardics, Sephardics may be a little darker than the Ashkenazis, but they are still later grade than say the Ethiopian um, Beit Israel Falasha and, 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 the, and the Hebrews of Nigeria and South Africa and those of West Africa and those of us over here in the diaspora. They're of a different, a, a different admixture. You know what I'm saying? A different admixture. You, you have to understand that, and we'll get into some of the details on that. This is not to disclude them, but this is to prove the truth of the, the context of this time because you're not seeing this in the context of the time. Because when you read this, people are going to think about the Jew that they saw or somebody say, I'm a Jew. Holocaust happened. I'm a Jew. You know, and you say, oh, that was a Jew. So when you start reading this, you start developing a false image in mind. You see what I'm saying? Now, maybe they will, but it's very important that we try to um, reorientate because our people are disorientated. You know what I'm saying? They don't know their name, their, their language, their, their flag, their land, where they're from, how they got here, why they came here, who they really are, and therefore what is their true purpose under God's heaven and on God's earth, which we have given up the rulership of to the devil and to the devil's agents because we're not, you know, we're in a state of amnesia. In other words, we're people in amnesia, and the majority of you all that still have these false names and, 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 and non-corrected statuses, you all really are wards of the state in waiting. That means that they can take custody of you, just like the slave master could when you belong to the slave master, but now you belong to the federal government. You understand? So we're going to touch on how to undo that. You see, how to undo that, but I think it's important that not just speaking on the technicalities of that, that we also preach and minister on the big picture. You see, because it's not just, it's not just, a, um, this is not just, it, it, it's not just a physical thing. It's not a physical freedom, you understand? But it's in spirit, you understand? It's, in, it's, it's, it's psych, psychologically, or speaking of soul level, and lastly, but not leastly, it's physical. You see, most look at the physical aspect and forget about the, the spiritual, you understand, our divine heritage. And they also forget about the psychological aspects. So while they try to free themselves physically and are not armed and prepared psychologically, that's where they get hit. When they're not prepared spiritually, that's where they get hit because they're not looking at it in the fullness. This is why when... Christ gave the Great Commission, he said, to, he said to teach them and to baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, because he was looking at our trifold, or the Selassie, the Trinity, our spirit, our soul, and our body in that order, not reverse. Don't flip that script, because you're going to have it asked back when it ain't going to go nowhere, and that's part of one of the reasons why we look at the movement. The movement has been in a state of inertia. Because we've been looking at the physical aspects only, you understand? And as His Majesty teaches us, man is by nature naturally selfish. You know, this is not pointing at anybody and saying anybody's wrong because at nature, they're naturally selfish. You understand? But if we say we are of, this is what Paul is talking about here. If we say, well, we are the black Jews, we're the Hebrews, so forth and so on, and we're here to let them know what it's about. Well, do we deal with these things first ourselves? Have we corrected these things ourselves? You know, to a certain level, I would say the name changed certain things we have begun. But as I begin to learn more about this, I say, yo, there's much more I even have to do. Yes, I may be further along than some of y'all are right now, but definitely I and I have not reached yet. 
You see what I'm saying? I and I have not reached yet, but the problem with some of y'all is y'all have not even begun or have not even understood why it is so important to consider this very, very carefully. Notice something like this. If everyone had to leave America because the land belongs to American Indian, a brother, um, Salanta Wyndham Manley, had um, said that there's a U.N., something for U.N., where the U.N. has made a proclamation or something that, that sacred lands, sacred lands need to be given back to the native indigenous people, maybe the American Indians speaking of this. Now, um, there's a lot of things that can and most likely will go on in the future. People say, America is my country, it's my home. Don't lie to yourself. America is the nation of a native people whose country was taken from them. Yeah, that was a long time ago, but, you know, there's no statute of limitations on that. There is no statute of limitations on that. You see what I'm saying? So, yes, America is the strongest that Babylon, who can make war with America. But there is a stronger than he. You know what I mean? There's a stronger than America. There's a stronger than that. You know what I mean? So it, it might be for a, a, another little bit of while. It might be for a long time or a short time. You know what I'm saying? But you have to know that we are living in an unjust situation. You know what I'm saying? In a sense, we are profiting, you know what I'm saying, off of the, you know, off of some other people's loss. And a lot of folks say, well, I own land in America, so far and so on. Really? Did you go to the rightful owners? It's like in the whole immigration debate, the most interesting thing about this immigration debate, they're talking about, well, the immigrants, we don't have a problem with the immigrants. So America's a nation of immigrants and slaves, but they all like to say immigrants, right? Because most of our people and leaders, you know what I mean, are so donkey butt dumb that they're not speaking on this. You understand? They're not saying nothing about it. So our representation by our non-elected leaders and I'm not talking about Obama and the politicians. I'm talking about a lot of these other pastors and preachers and other people, you understand, who we never elected. You understand? We, we, we never elected as people, but they speak, and this becomes the black people's, you understand? This is, this is where the black people of America, this is what the black people of America are saying. Let us speak to Sharpton. And we're not against Sharpton, but come on. You know, real is real. You understand? Who elected these people? Just because they know media folks. They can get out in front of the camera, so forth and so on. That does not entitle them, because that doesn't go on in any other group. You know, in any other group. You understand, to have a couple of people be as the representatives for all the black people, you understand, and we never even elected, you know, we never even elected them. You, you know what I'm saying? But um, here, here in this right here, um, when it says to the Jew, that means Paul was talking to Hebrews. They were Hebrews. They were Ethiopian Hebrews before him. Most likely it was, a, it was kind of a mixed crowd, it was, you know, a mixed kind of multitude. You understand? They were Ethiopian Hebrews, part of his own ethnic group. You understand? There were certain Gentiles and righteous Gentiles. You know, white folks, Europeans, Romans there too. There probably were other nationalities, other nations as well. And the Bible clearly demonstrates, clearly demonstrates that. But he, he begins off by speaking to his own Hebrew people and saying, listen, y'all are bragging and boasting a lot of good things, but he's basically saying that y'all have not really fully acted on this. And he made a comparison with the Gentiles who don't have this law, you understand, and, and who have not been given this, this gracious instruction, but by nature they are acting in accordance basically with the will of God without having the word of God. And we have the word of God and are not acting on the word of God, but are boasting and bragging because we got the word of God. And we know how that worked, you understand? We know how that worked out for, for them because we can look at ourselves and our people, you understand, um, nearly, nearly 2,000 plus years, you understand, 2,000 plus years later, and we can see how all that worked out. 
So I've been a little bit long-winded on this. I think so. Others might not. Hopefully if you don't and there's been something useful that, that has been garnered or gathered from this, all praise be to the King of Kings in the name of his Christ. And we're going to come forward from a little bit more on this particular subject matter. Um, this is a continuation of our divine, um, our divine heritage. This was just touch on a couple of points and how these things connect. Something to think about. Food for thought. Because, you know, niggas got to eat. But we need to eat spiritually. You know what I'm saying? We need to eat also on the, on the soul and the psychical levels, you know, not just build up the physical, but also build up our, our heart and our mind. So Shalom, Rastafari, and once again, um, may you all have a happy, and hopefully you've had a happy and a blessed and a safe um, May 5th, the 71st anniversary of our Imperial Ethiopian Independence Day. So give thanks. Shalom.